ever find yourself in those meetings, you know, everyone's nodding along, talking about how crucial training is, how important it is. And then when it's actually time to, you know, get down to brass tacks and make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Cricket. buy-in just evaporates. Poof. Gone. Yeah. And you're left holding this, like, half-baked plan. It's so frustrating. The worst. Well, today we're going to unpack that very problem, how to build that rock-solid support for training, for development, for all those initiatives that we need to actually, you know, make things happen. Really buy in. Exactly. And we're diving into some excerpts from Teaming for Training and Development by Guy W. Wallace. And he's got a really interesting framework for getting everybody on the same page right from the get-go. Yeah. You know, and what I like about Wallace's work is he doesn't just give you, like, these generic teamwork tips. He really digs into the specifics of how these dynamics play out. The nitty-gritty. The nitty-gritty. Love it. Yeah. So one of the first things that really jumped out at me was this idea of the Friends of Training Trap. And I don't know about you, but... Oh, tell me you haven't fallen into that one. Maybe. Maybe. Especially early in your career, right? A hundred percent. You're so eager to build support for training yeah. that you naturally gravitate towards the folks who are already on board. Mm -hmm. The ones who are like, yes, training is important. We need more of it. They're your cheerleaders. Exactly. Yeah. But here's the thing that Wallace points out. What's that? Enthusiasm. Yeah. It doesn't always equal influence. Oh, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. You can have a room full of cheerleaders. Yeah. But if none of those people actually have the power to, say, sign off on a budget, or to clear someone's schedule to actually attend the training. You're dead in the water. You are in trouble. It's DOA, the whole thing. Exactly. And that's where, as Wallace illustrates so brilliantly with his story about this window manufacturing video. Oh, yes. This is where things can really go off the rails. It's the perfect anecdote, really. It is, because I think so many people listening can relate to this. Oh, for sure. So uh, for our listener who maybe hasn't read this book, set the scene for us a little bit. So picture this. You've been tasked with creating a training video for, of all things, a window manufacturing company. Okay. Sounds simple enough. Right. How hard could it be? Right. And this is where those friends of training can actually become a liability because suddenly everyone's got an opinion. Too many cooks. Oh, yeah. You've got marketing chiming in. You've got sales. You've got the manufacturing team themselves. Oh, nobody. But here's the kicker. What's that? None of them. None of them. Except for maybe, you know... The big boss. The one person who's actually in charge. The one person who can actually make decisions and write checks. Exactly. And they are conspicuously absent. Me. Exactly. Until the very end. Until it's too late. And then they waltz in, take one look at this video yeah. that everyone's poured their blood, sweat, and tears into. And they hate it. And they hate it. Cue the dramatic music. The budget's blown. Deadlines are missed. Yeah. It's a disaster. A classic. And it's all because they weren't involved from the get-go. And Wallace, as he tells it in the book, he learned this the hard way, right? He experienced this firsthand. Oh. So the question then becomes, all right, how do we how do we avoid this? Right. How do we get off this this train wreck scenario? How do we prevent it in the first place? And that is where Wallace's brilliant concept of the project steering team comes into play. It's like assembling like the Avengers of yes. of training, right? Instead of assembling a group of superheroes, right. you're assembling a group of stakeholders. Okay. But these aren't just any stakeholders, right? Mm -hmm. We're not just looking for our cheerleaders. Right, right. We need the heavy hitters. We need the people who can actually make things happen. We need someone from finance who understands the budget implications of this training. Someone from operations. Yes. Someone who knows how this is actually going to work on a day-to-day -day basis. Exactly. Okay. Someone who can really speak to the practical realities. So it's about being strategic about who you recruit for this team. 100%. They can't just be people who love training. They need to be people who can actually... They can champion it, but they also need to be able to... Champion it, yeah, but also... Navigate the complexities of the organization. Yes, work the system. And ensure that this training program actually aligns with what matters. The goals, the objectives of the business as a whole. Which I think leads us to the next big question. Which is? How do you convince these very important and I'm sure very busy people right. to actually join this team? Because, let's face it, getting a seat on the project steering team, it's not exactly at the top of everyone's wish list. It's not the sexiest thing. So how do you make it worthwhile for them? How do you pitch it? Right, how do you get them on board? You got to think, like, you're you know, back in the boardroom pitching a new product. Ooh, 
Ooh, okay. You're not just asking for their time. Right. Which is, let's be honest, the most valuable thing that they have. It is a big ask. You're offering them a chance to really make a difference. I like it. A chance to solve a problem that's probably been impacting their bottom line. So you need to speak their language. 100%. Yeah. Which is why Wallace is such a proponent of data, right? Okay. You need to build that business case. Because it's not enough to just walk in and say like, hey, we need to invest in training. Right. Our employees need this. Trust me, it'll be good. Exactly. Nobody is buying that. Yeah. You have to be able to connect the dots for them, right? Show them with numbers. So, like, how do we quantify that? Exactly. Give me an example. So instead of saying, we need to improve our customer service skills, you say, this training program, it's projected to reduce customer service complaints by 15%. Ooh. Which translates to... You know, X number of dollars saved. Oh, I like that. Or the sales training, we expect it to increase sales by 10%. Okay, now you're talking. Which means, you know, bigger bonuses for everybody. Everybody wins. Everyone wins. I like it. That's how you get their attention. Okay, so you've wowed them with your data. They're sold. They're on board. You've assembled your dream team of stakeholders. Amazing. You've managed to wrangle everybody's calendars, and you're finally in a room together. This is where the fun begins, right? Right, but this is also where, you know, things can still go sideways, right? Oh, absolutely. So how do you keep this group, this powerhouse group of people, focused and moving in the same direction? Well, this is where I think strong leadership, but also really good facilitation comes into play. So someone needs to be like the conductor of the orchestra. Exactly. Because you've got all these different players. Yeah. And they've all got their own instruments, their own parts. Right. Their own ideas. And they need someone to kind of bring it all together, make sure it doesn't just become noise. So you've got to set a clear tempo. You've got to have like a shared understanding of the music. Yeah. And that's why, you know, going back to Wallace's framework, it's so important to have that clear roadmap from the get go. OK. What are we trying to achieve with this training? What are our timelines? And crucially, how are we going to make decisions? Yeah, who gets to decide if there's a disagreement? Exactly. You don't want to be figuring that out in the middle of a heated debate. No, no, nobody wants that. So establish those processes up front. And then, equally important. What's that? Roles and responsibilities. And not just for the project steering team. Right, because this is a whole production. Exactly. We've got a whole cast of characters behind the scenes. Okay, so walk me through that, because I think this is where people get overwhelmed. It sounds like a lot, but it's all about breaking down the process. Okay, I'm ready. So we've got our project steering team, our fearless leaders. Okay. They're providing overall guidance, making sure we're aligned with the business objectives. Right. But then we bring in our crack team of analysts. The data nerds. I was going to say data gurus, but yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. They're the ones who are really going deep, figuring out what the training needs actually are. So, like, are we talking performance reviews? Are we talking, like, what does that look like? All of the above, right? Analyzing job descriptions, doing needs assessments, interviewing people, really trying to get to the root cause of any performance issues. Getting into the nitty gritty. Exactly. I like it. And once they've done their magic, they pass the baton to the design team. Ooh. Okay, what happens there? This is where things get creative because they're taking all that data, all those insights, and they're turning them into a learning experience. So they're thinking about like, what's the best way to actually deliver this training? Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Is it in person? Is it online? Is it a blended approach? What's the content going to look like? How can we make it engaging? How can we make it stick? And this is where I imagine you need people who really understand how adults learn best. 100%. And who have like, some creativity, some pizzazz. For sure. You need your instructional designers. You might need graphic designers, multimedia people, mm -hmm. depending on the complexity. Right. So you're putting together a whole team of specialists. Exactly. Okay. And then, of course, you can't forget about the people who actually have to build the thing. Right. To actually bring this training to life. Your training development work team. Okay. What do they do? They're the ones who take those design blueprints and they build the e-learning modules they write the facilitator guides. They record the videos, all of that. Exactly. They make it real. It all comes together. And then last but not least, you've got to test it out, right? Of course, the pilot test team. They're the unsung heroes. What do they do? They're the ones who are in the trenches, trying it out, seeing what works, what doesn't, getting feedback from actual learners. And this is so crucial because, I mean, you can have the best design training in the world. Right. But if it's not landing with the learners, it's useless. Exactly. So what I'm hearing is you've got all these different teams working in concert, each with their own area of expertise. Exactly. But how do you keep it from becoming 
you know, chaotic. Because it's a lot of moving pieces, right? It is. And that's where, again, that project steering team, that's where they really earn their keep. Okay. Because they're not just there to sign off on the budget at the beginning and then disappear. Right. They're providing that ongoing guidance. The oversight. The oversight. Making sure that all these different teams are staying on track, that the training is still aligned with the business goals, because those can shift and change even over the course of developing a program. Especially nowadays, right? Exactly. Things move fast. Things move fast. So you need that group to be that kind of touchstone. To keep their fingers on the pulse. Exactly. And this is what I really love about this approach, right? It's not just about like, oh, let's go make a training. Right. It's about let's be really thoughtful about how this training fits into the bigger picture of the organization. 100%. And I think that is ultimately how you avoid you know, ending up in one of those situations that we talked about at the beginning. Where you've got this amazing training that nobody's going to... It just dies on the vine. Exactly. Or it's just not as effective as it could be. <laughs> right, because it doesn't have that support. Exactly. It's not connected to what matters. So I want to kind of bring this back to our listeners. You know, those of you who are listening right now. Yeah. Think about... Think about a recent training that you've been a part of. Could be as a participant. Could be that you helped develop it anything right and just sort of think back on that experience were there any roadblocks anything that you felt like oh this could have been done better or even just like those moments of miscommunication or where things got bogged down yeah where you weren't sure who was making the decisions exactly now imagine how this approach how having this project steering team in place how that might have changed things. Could it have gotten you to that outcome faster? Exactly. Could it have been a more enjoyable process for everyone involved? Right. Or could the training itself have been more impactful, more aligned with what you were hoping to get out of it? Something to think about. Definitely. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into teaming for training and development with Guy W. Wallace. Always a fascinating topic. Always. And so crucial. So crucial. Because at the end of the day. What's it all about? It's about people. It is. And it's about empowering those people to do their best work. Couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time. Happy training, everybody.